Ah, uh, pine trees, they're everywhere. And you probably have them on your model railroad. And we see here what we think of as normal pine trees. Tall, bushy, uh, limbs from top to bottom. And they're frequently found all over the United States. But here in North Carolina, we have a special pine tree. Across the southeastern United States, we also have this pine tree. It's a loblolly pine. It's characterized by a trunk that generally goes halfway or two-thirds of the way up the tree. And then at the top, there are the usual pine tree branches with pine needles. The difference being that the bottom part of the trunk is totally bare. If we look over here, we see a smaller one. And you'll notice what happens is, see the branches on the bottom? A couple of them have broken off. Some of them are not looking very good. So they'll break off eventually until the tree becomes like the one we just previously saw. I have not found an internet resource or a scenic company or people making scenery products that reproduces this particular type of tree. So if you want this on your layout, we're going to have to make some. And that's what we're going to do in this episode of the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision. The characteristics of the tree that we're looking for, and you can see it in this picture, a straight trunk with very few branches or no branches for about the first half to two thirds. At the top, a lot of little branches and it's a pine tree, of course, so it has pine needles. So what do we have to work with? Well, how about this? It's a Woodland Scenics armature for a pine tree. It, of course, looks nothing like the pine tree we want to make. So that's an odd starter. Next candidate. That is a Woodland Scenics armature for a deciduous tree. But notice its characteristics. It has a straight trunk. It has some branches on the bottom that we can clip off and maybe we could affix them to the top to form that dense area at the top that we're looking for. What are we going to do for pine needles? Well, the closest thing I could think of is static grass. If you start putting ground foam on there, it's going to begin to look like a deciduous tree. So it's got to have these little pointy things that are called pine needles, static grass. Let's look at a prototype. The prototype, this one here, is simply one of these with all the bottom branches cut off and no new branches added at the top. Then we put some sticky glue on the ends of each branch, drop some uh, static grass on there, and we have something that resembles a pine tree. What are its deficiencies? Well, if you look back at our prototype, the prototype has in this area a lot more branches. So what we could do, and what we will try to do, and we'll show you that if and when we finish it, is we'll take the branches that we cut off from here, We'll glue them onto the top, and that should give us a much more dense area at the top. And then we'll give them the same treatment with static grass. The other thing we have to do, if you look closely at the bark of the pine trees, the loblolly pines, they're not brown like this. They're more of a brown with some gray added. So before we start putting static grass on here, we'll be painting the trunk brown and then we'll be giving it a gray wash. So stay tuned, we'll see how that turns out. Back on the workbench now with our Loblolly Pine tree project, we've built this. Notice it has the profile of the Loblolly tree. Bare trunk and lots of branches up the top. Our starting point was this. It's the old Woodland Scenics tree armature made for deciduous trees. See how it's flat? So we did some twisting around and turning 
And the major thing was from to about this point, we cut off all these branches, cut them into smaller pieces, and glued them into place on our sample tree, if you will. So the next step will be to uh, paint the tree brown with some gray highlights, because a lot of the bark turns out to be gray instead of brown. And then we'll apply our static grass. I think what I might do is use a little darker static grass than I did in the, in the previous version. And I think that'll give us a better color. Returning to our tree, we have painted it a brown color. Yeah, it's railroad tie brown. And observing that the real tree has some gray highlights, we're going to take our brush, a little gray paint on it, and do some dry brushing. We just want a little gray. I'm not trying to cover the brown. We just want some highlights. A more paint. paint off until most of the paint is gone and then we get a little gray so the brown still showing through but now we have the gray introduced I'll do that up at the top branches because we'll be able to see most of the branches get the top make sure we've got some coverage at the bottom here break one of the branches off which I of course did not intend to do okay so we've got mostly brown and a little gray and that's our dry brushing lesson for today well, we're back with our tree having been dry brushed with the gray on the trunk. It's time to start the process of attaching what we're going to use for leaves, which is static grass. Product we're going to use, Hobby Tack. And this stuff comes with this very large applicator, which we're not going to use. We did use that on our sample tree, and here's what we ended up with. Not the best look. So, well, I'll use a little micro brush instead. What you want to do, the leaves grow both from below and from above. So we just want to get a little bit on the ends in this manner. When it comes out white, when it dries to clear, it's ready to use, and it'll remain sticky. And I'll just continue doing this. Maybe a little too much there. Whereas that's not enough. Just on the ends now. That's where the pine needles grow. top of the branches. And we want the same thing just at the ends.
Okay. The next step is not really a step. We have to let it dry. And it doesn't really dry, it dries tacky. But we'll know when it's ready to be used and to have our static grass applied because it will start turning clear. And you can see on some of the bottoms that we did first, like that one there, it is starting to turn clear. So when it's all ready, we'll come back and show the static grass application. It is now time to apply the static grass. So what are we going to use? I have here Nook Wild Grass. And product number is 07106. It's a 6mm static grass. Now the way you do this, you get a little pinch of the static grass. We're going to do this upside down first. You just drop some on it. And it sticks where it sticks. And where it doesn't stick, it just falls into our container. Doing the bottom first. You could do the top first. I don't think that actually matters. And I'll do the top, which is, of course, easier because it's the top. So that's what we have right now. And from a distance, that looks pretty close to what we were looking for. Because the glue stays sticky, we can always add more. But I think for the time being, we'll just let this go the way it is. Yeah, maybe a little more. Like you saw in our previous example, you can put too much on here, so it looks really weird and really unreal. All right, we could do this forever. That's what we're doing for now. I think it's a half decent representation, unless you look really close, of a loblolly pond. So since that's what we were going for, kind of pleased with this result. We only have to do like 40 or 50 more of these to have a loblolly pine forest that we can actually use on our layout. Hope you've enjoyed this video about making loblolly pines, a multi-step process, starting out with Woodland Scenics armatures, adding branches, painting them to make them look more realistic, and finally applying the static grass to take the place of the pine needles. That's the end of our video. We thank you very much for watching the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision.